Good morning. Uh, Calling to okay. order our pre -com pre meeting for our city commission here on Friday, February eighteenth, two thousand twenty-two, at eight a.m. Thank you all for coming out and uh, being a part of this discussion with us today. Uh, certainly, if you have any questions about what's been discussed today, please follow up with the uh, city commission or uh, city staff prior to commission meeting for clarity. Uh, good to see you guys uh, this morning. Hopefully, you've had a a good week and are ready for our upcoming uh, commission meeting. Uh, looking over our agenda here, a couple of good things happening. We have uh, proclamations going on for the North Bay Haven Girls Weightlifting Team and the Lynn Haven Raiders Cheer Team. Uh, let's drop down to our uh, consent agenda or before there. Uh, City Attorney, is there anything that we need to be aware of before uh, Tuesday's meeting? Not, not that I'm aware of. Okay, thank you. Um, regarding the consent agenda, any issues with anything on the consent agenda? Uh, of course, regular meeting minutes, approval to extend the occupation of an RV at 305 Montana. Uh, any issues with leaving that on the consent agenda? Um, and approval to appoint uh, Jerry Whitworth to the Board of Adjustment. I know there were a lot of questions last time with uh, our consent agenda appointment. Any questions or concerns about this one? It's an Air Force person, so he must be outstanding. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> right, awesome. Okay, so um, any any concerns about about that with the consent agenda? Anything? Right now we're just discussing consent agenda to see if everybody's okay with leaving leaving it as is. Yes. All right. Uh dropping down to our old business. Agenda item number 11, this will be public hearing, the final reading of ordinance number 1127, for RBB, changing from industrial to low density residential. So I know this is something we've discussed before in our previous pre-commission <laughs> as well as commission meeting. Now this is our time to vote on it or table it for further discussion. So. Any any thoughts on this? Any I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> um, I did talk to the last business owner in there, okay. and so they all are aware that this is going on, and just to make sure that they're aware in case they want to come and um, provide any public comments or anything like that. So, um, what were their sentiments towards the develop or the possibility of what it could become? We don't know what it could um, become per se, but of what it could become. Or what it could i wouldn't really talk about that so much i i don't think from talking with i don't believe that uh they're much in favor of it so are they in favor of <clears throat> i guess this amendment changing are they in favor of the application changing to low density residential i don't think so okay but i could ask a question amanda from what i saw on the map with this um it's it's it the way it's zoned right now with industrial with the wetlands and the conservation areas, is there even enough space to put even a 10,000 square foot facility for someone to do something with? Or is it just going to stay vacant land because there's not a big enough piece of land to put a big big building on? I mean, you look at the other buildings in that industrial track, and then you look at this little piece of land, and there's conservation here and conservation here and restricted water or uh, wetland wetlands. here and restricted wetlands here. And I'm like, so if, if a guy came in and wanted to put up a big facility, like a train or something, they would not be able to do it. I don't think there's enough room there to put a big facility there now. I mean, somebody could probably put something small there. Uh, one of the things that um, I, I think perhaps should be borne in mind is that when all that industrial was asked for when it became industrial that was a fuel depot up there right. i mean that was an air force owned fuel depot with tanks with with gasoline or whatever mm -hmm. it was like a brown site brownfield site right. i i think maybe one of the questions that maybe we should be thinking of is is it appropriate to have industrial up there on waterfront now or that's do we want our industrial <laughs> somewhere else in the future mm -hmm. because that's prime real estate it up is. there i agree so you know i feel like the times are different now it, it was appropriate before because of what was there to the north right but 
that's not going to be what's up there anymore. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. Thinking, yeah, no, you know, a like a planning perspective long term. Right. That, that's a good point. I just, you know, it's like you said, it's a very valuable piece of property. And I, I'd hate for it to just sit vacant. You know what I mean? Because we don't want to let houses build on there or whatnot. But on the flip side, it's not enough property to actually put a manufacturing facility or any other well, facility. Well, I... I Correct me if I'm wrong, they probably could, but they would have to bring it up. They'd have up. to get permits. And yeah, I mean, they up. couldn't touch the conservation. Right. And we do have a 30-foot wetland setback. But if they went to Northwest Florida Water Management District and mitigated and got permits, then somebody could put a facility. I haven't looked to see how much total right. space Because it's also there. parking, because that's things that right. we think about with right. ours. It's not just the facility. You have to yep. be able to have parking and all this other stuff. Yep. Um, You'd have to bring it up a, a, a crap load of dirt. Yeah. And storm, your stormwater facility. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think that's how that industrial place got started. I think that's um, when I was looking at it. I think they did have to bring in a, bu a bunch of dirt to get to where it is now. And so, low run area. But here's my worry: is let's just say, and I'm not saying it's going to happen, but let's just say you take one of the businesses, like they take Merrick, for instance, and let's say they decide that they no longer want to be in business or whatever. And so they, they sell the place and they end up sell it to someone and they end up putting residential households in there. You will never, ever get that industrial place back, mm -hmm. you know. And that's my worry is if you start allowing residential developments in there and, and one of those businesses go away, you never get that back because there's a lot of meat on the bone when you're talking about industrial manufacturing businesses. And uh, But isn't there, there's a little bit of a separation there because you have your industrial track so to speak where you have all the, the big buildings back there mm -hmm. um that you know that's all industrial so it all fits together as industrial whereas you have that that little water way that separates and then you have mm -hmm. where the homes are and then everything over here is homes right. so i don't think it would be hard to keep people from from saying no this is this is our industrial track right here it stops right here where the fuel depot was and right it turns into homes you know what i mean right that's what i'm getting at. yeah, yeah. Could, and is there any way when we uh you do your presentation that um i know you sent me a picture of the industrial park what what is all included in the industrial park when you say what is included what businesses or just what because on that land all the you, land it it's i think it's it's showing yeah. on the map but um i don't on the oh no, on the presentation, on my presentation. I think oh, it is. is it? Yeah, scroll, scroll. Yeah, look, look. Go, okay, go back up a little. No, 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 no. Just a little bit. Just take okay. your hands off. Okay. Let her do it. Yeah. So that's the man we're talking about. Right. This is all industrial here. Right. That is not. That's your right. mixed use and your commercial. So this is the industrial land. Right. Here. Okay. Now, one of the things that Amanda mentioned before, I believe in our last pre-commission meeting, was that each thing could be looked upon as a case-by-case -case basis. So if, even if Merrick sold your property to someone else who wanted to develop it into residential, you could still say, no, it needs to stay industrial and it has to be used for industrial purposes. Right. So, you know, this doesn't necessarily have to set a precedence for what happens to all the other industrial property. If we decide to change this to the low density residential, it could just be, this is this. And we can still look at it on a case by case basis instead of saying, you know, setting that new precedent. It makes it possible though, because it brings the low density residential next to it. Right. Yeah, that's the point I was going to bring Because that's what the, her rules are, you know, the, what we've been told. When there's a land change used, but can't we change already those? next to it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can we change those well, too, But it's not at certain levels of the industrial. Um, here with me. Oh, right. But you know, this, this is still a, a policy decision, so you're not going to set a precedent. I mean, if, if you guys make a decision, a legislative decision mm -hmm. that, all right, we want to have a 40 acre industrial park and never change it, then you could. I mean, that, that's fine and that's justifiable. So just because you've got residential bumping up against it um you can always keep that decision like we're, we're going to keep you know what we have like like you talked about the existing buildings that are all industrial and you always want to keep what you have you, you can do that it's a you know it's a policy decision so um i mean really to me what you're looking at for tuesday is you know do we want to slightly shrink the size of that industrial park to to change this this vacant land like what amanda said is a lot of you know wetland and conservation change that to residential so you can get some you know get some houses in there and get some some use out of it 
but like, like we said, we're not really setting a precedent. Um, if you want to keep an industrial park out there, you can, and it's really just a policy decision of whether you're going to change the size of it or not. Any other questions for uh, Amanda? <laughs> any other thoughts on it? Does Ben have any thoughts? As far as the economic development perspective? Well, it's not a secret that um, the, our commerce on the industrial lot inventories is very low. Mm -hmm. um, but that's really more like a long term strategy question of right. the question you know where do we want to be in the next 10 15 years from a commercial de development perspective um, um, changing the land use of that one parcel doesn't really make a big difference um, I think a waterfront an industrial waterfront property this this type of property it, it doesn't I mean when you think about the highest and best use, uh, you, you don't really think about it in an in in industrial use way. So uh, it would kind of make sense for me to change this to um, low density residential as part of that use way. Okay. But long term, there's maybe something for strategic planning meeting. Uh, long term, we, I think we really need to start thinking about um, our industrial and commercial lot inventories, you know, right. what do we have available and what do we need to change? Yeah. I know before when I met with uh, EDA, and I think that's when Garrett was still there, I mean, they were asking for 50 acre parcels. Mm -hmm. when, we, when I was talking about industrial and bringing in big business, mm -hmm. there were, you know, 30 at the least is what they were mentioning then. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, around 50 acre, which we don't have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in our in our city limits, uh, maybe there's a, a green type industrial company that, that might be able to use something like that. You know, they're green, so hopefully they would be more conservative and yeah, and, and utilize less space. But no, that you know, it depends on like if any of these businesses want to expand too. If they want to expand some, then that might give them an opportunity to expand. You know, like I think the Maximus building is the one that's next to it. You know. Let's say they wanted to expand out a little bit and, and do something with it. I, you know. Well, that could be an idea. Is maybe asking them if they want to, you know, get a sale price or you know, talk to the owner of this property. You know, is that something that the owners would be interested in doing? Yeah. In regards to expanding. That's why I hope that these these business owners show up on Tuesday because I really want to hear their perspective on it. That's who it's going to affect. Thank you, Ben. Thanks. All right, agenda item number 12, uh, another public hearing. This will be for the application for future land use map amendment, the market shops of Lynn Haven, from mixed use to commercial. Right, any discussion on that? No. Any questions? No. All right, new business, um, discussion and possible approval of resolution. Number 2022-02376, fee schedule update. We have staff to come up Yeah, for. well, a couple of things. Uh, usually, every probably 12 to 18 months, we'll look at the fees and we'll update them. These, this usually comes through. And it's just accordingly to, um, you know, how the city is changing, what we add or delete. And um, some of the things that are in there are pretty old. So we'll take some of those out. Right. And then we'll add some additional um, information in there to meet. Look, for instance, um, the senior center wasn't in there as a rent rental. And that's something now that we have that we can use as an additional income. We can <laughs> rent it out on Saturdays because so many people have asked us to do that. Um, the garden club is in there all of those areas there and as we continue to get buildings up and going of course we'll add to that um made some changes in uh, sports and recreation to make that very consistent with what we we are doing uh, or have been doing made some changes in um animal shelter actually there was only one change um ty you correct me if, yes, if i'm wrong correct. Um, really one change, um, I think it's correct on uh, Munico, uh, but was not correct actually in the ordinance itself or the resolution itself. So we do this 
probably 12, 18 months just to look at our fees and make sure they're in line. So I'll be honest, mm -hmm. when I first saw this, it was a little bit overwhelming. Yeah, it is pretty overwhelming. Um, what I would like to see is what are our rates compared to everyone else? And I'm not saying we need to have the lowest rates, but are they competitive or comparable to other areas in Bay County? And I don't know the answer to that. We would have to pull up their, their schedule fee and, yeah. and see what it would be. And I can tell you, our fees don't change a whole bunch simply because we try to keep them fairly, fairly low. And, and they may be, they may be competitive, comparable. I just don't really answer for that. I think part of it, uh, just thinking off the top of my head, though we could compare it, sometimes we're going to be comparing apples to oranges. Right. Very true. Because if we take like our senior center and what well, the amenities yeah. that we offer, what building in Panama City can you rent? that might offer those same amenities. Correct. Now you have the Callaway Center, but then that's actually more of a... Yeah, I don't, I'm not talking so much that. Which, you're right, that is comparing apples to oranges, but like building permits and codes and stuff like that. I, right. I would imagine there's a lot of similarities. I'm sure there's some differences, but I imagine there's a lot of similarities in that and just making sure that... Now the other difference with, and I agree, now, but we're also going to be getting into our revenue at that point as well. Mm -hmm. So... If we look at, let's say, let's say if we do a cost analysis or compared to a fee analysis, and we say what well, Panama City is less expensive in this, you know, it's cheaper or less permit fee in this area than our area. But well, Panama City is three times as large as us in land mass, right? And have more and has more population than we. <clears throat> so they're going to get that money. They're going to recoup having a lower fee, or they might have more businesses than we have. So even if you look at the business license, <clears throat> they may have the truth. They have more quantity. So they, they may be able to charge a lesser fee <clears throat> on certain things if you look at the schedule yeah. for that. So I'm not saying not to do a fee analysis schedule. Um, and, and I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying we need yeah. to be the lowest. Mm -hmm. Just uh, I don't want to see a fee that's like, you know, two, three, four times more than what other ones are charging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that's happening. I just I don't know. But I just want to make sure that it's comparable, competitive to other places. Okay. Me too. Yeah. Me three. Was this an ordinance? I thought this was an. <laughs> is it a resolution? Yeah, but it, it's so. always a re it's always a resolution. Okay. Um, we actually um were asked in the building department, I think in 2017, 2018, um to look at the the different fees within the building department, the mm -hmm. permits, that kind of thing, because. People are always saying, developers are always saying, oh, you will charge more than anybody else. But right. I'll, I'll tell you, when I worked in Callaway, they said the same thing. And it doesn't stop them from developing. They're still developing here. They still want to come mm -hmm. here. But we did try and do an analysis. And I probably still got that information somewhere, even though it's old now. <laughs> right. But what we found was similar to what the mayor was saying. It's really hard because you're not comparing apples to apples because the way they charge for things is different. Right. The systems they use are different. You know, they may contract with EPCI to do certain things. It's really, really difficult right. to do that. Right, right. Um, I get that. But, you know, I mean, it is something that, that can be done. Um, okay. Most of their fees, they have most of their fees um, online. So, you know. Is um, is there a deadline we got to get this done by or anything? or? No. no. We just bring it to, I think we have not updated this in a while. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that we do have a lot of trouble with or right now is um, really uh, dangerous dogs in the animal shelter. And, and uh, residents are really, really yeah. uh, making want to make sure that those people don't continue to have those dangerous dogs out there with no consequences. Yeah. And um, we were pretty... Uh, kind of lax in, in that area. So we really wanted to make sure. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> what, you, what you were talking about, I think, was um, Ty also, this is the fee schedule resolution, but Ty did have an ordinance that I think he probably got with you on. Yes. Um, And that had all that animal control stuff in yes. and everything. Because I had asked, did you want the ordinance to come and be voted on before the fee schedule yeah. or whatever? But um, but you, you didn't want it at that point. I don't know if you do now. No, he's, we said ordinance is not up to date yet. Okay, so okay. that was the ordinance though, and this yeah. is the fee schedule. Can I, can I just bring your attention to something that I would like you all to think about? Um, and that's on page 33. 
you have it near? Would you want me to look at page thirty-three? Page thirty-three of the fee schedule. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Now this isn't a change, but I've highlighted it because I was kind of surprised to see this. Okay. It says permit to live in a garage tent or outbuilding while constructing a dwelling or business building for every 90 day period. That must have been in there since I don't know when. Um, I'm not I, I'm not sure we should have that in there because we don't have in our ULDC that someone can live in a tent while they're building their house. But um, it's up to you really, I suppose. And if you do want to be able to allow people to live in tents, then um, I guess we need to put it in the ULDC. <laughs> To live in tents and garages, yeah, yeah, which we normally don't allow at all. You know, you've got like sanitary conditions, and I, I think we should take that out. Yeah. But I, I didn't want to just strike through it without because right. it needs to come from you. Right. So if Pat has to move back in his parents' garage, as <laughs> things go south, is he gonna have to come get a permit? Or... Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Two hundred dollars. Oh, jeez, Pat! Way to bring down the mood, bro. Oh, you're you're the one coming right at me. <laughs> I had enough sleep last night. So anyway, if you can look at that and tell me if you would like for me to remove that, that would be lovely. Right, thank so, you. how difficult would it be to do an analysis that that you had done before? Is that how tasking is that? Is there a specific area that right. you want to analyze? Right, I, because it's it's that. That's a large task, and I do know there's component of this fee schedule we're going to do an analysis on. We have to do an analysis on, um, but we have not gotten uh, confirmation on it, and it's you. It's in the building area. That's the only area that's going to be in there. It wasn't helpful before. The city manager, when he got the results, decided not to mess with it. So I'm not saying not to do it. I just wonder if there's a particular area that you no, want to I just focus uh, on. like I said, it's it's a lot to take in. And, there aren't uh, that many changes in here. It's a huge resolution. A lot um, of it I know was animal but, control. But, but <laughs> what you've got is um, you know all the the different departments, and so what happens is we send it out to all the departments, and they look at their own their fees, and then they let us know if there's any they need changing. And it looks like there's a lot because some of them have been like recategorized. Like reclassified, and so everything that you see, I've highlighted this just so you can see what the changes are. Right. And everything that's been taken out or changed is struck through. I appreciate that. So there's that. a lot of stuff being taken out actually, just because it's been. It doesn't mean that the the fees have been increased. It just means that it's been re, it reclassified, and we've broken things up a bit to make it clearer. All right. So how about this? Is it? Is it? not as tasking if you just look at the highlighted areas and to see if we can do a comparison of, of the changes that are proposed in this with other areas in Bay County. Are you talking about, because the highlighted areas, like I said, most of them are just reclassification. So you're talking about where there's increases? Right, right, right. Okay, so I think there's things like, for instance, like Bobby, um, with your increases, wasn't it things like um, you added, like when people lose or break their, their trash cans? Then, yeah, for the second can, then we had the can fee for special events along with the barricade fee. Yeah. And then the utility, the metering, the cost of meters for not. Yeah. So a lot of it from the utilities is where prices have increased. So we've right. had to increase it. But they're kind of minimal. It's like $20 yeah. or something. Well, the, I saw the, actually, the meters was one of them that I saw, which yeah. that, that, makes sense because the price of everything is going up right now yeah and uh so i i think a lot of the changes that have been made as far as fees go have maybe only gone up from like 20 to 40 or something yeah like 20 but, is, but is that unreasonable to ask just for the highlighted areas or well, what well, do you guys you think? don't all the highlighted areas are not changed. changing that's that's what she's saying she just moves some of them around but oh. what we she's, can... she's letting she's just letting you know she's moved those around and then for instance like we have Sheffield Park. No one else I know has an amphitheater, so there right. there wouldn't be a comparison there, um, and so so it's kind of difficult in that sense. No, so. What we could do is, as a commission, if we wanted a an analysis project, we could break up these pages, and then 
go through and pick out each city that we want to do an analysis on and then sort of come back and look at it section by section over a period of time it's something yeah, that, you know, that we could do as a commission is so, okay hey this is your section compared to this city and we could just do it over a period of time since it's not a an emergency um to get this completed. it's, it's so, not and then one of the things we can do is take the highlights off of there so it doesn't look like we have a, well, a massive amount of changes which we don't tie commissioner as far as the animal control goes um the muni codes are up to date and we've been utilizing those prices that appear to be changes when they're really not for right. at least three years um for whatever reason it didn't get changed in the ordinance three years ago or okay. whenever they did it okay. so really we only have one increase in any of the animal control and it's other animals for instance ferrets or you know we're, we're adopting out a 1500 dollars burner for twenty dollars right we increased that to 45 dollars, and with the cage it'll be 85 that is the only change to the animal it just looks overwhelming because all of that was never changed in the original code mm -hmm. only in muni Okay. So and, it, it's really misleading. Right. Well, we added it in yes, here sir. to make sure it was right. clear. Yeah. That way we bring it up to date. And whenever you make a change to an ordinance or a resolution, the old language has to be struck through and the new language has to be bold and double underlined. When the, when the, re the resolution actually comes to be signed, whenever it's approved, all that highlighting will come off it. All that. Oh, yeah, all the highlighting will come off it. So I guess it's repeating what she's saying. I know, it's just an echo. <laughs> but you're exactly right. So actually, I get what you're saying. There's really not a whole lot of no, sir. Price it just increases. looks like it because of the way we have to show the changes in the resolution so that you can clearly see them. So and then in the actual resolution, um, in the, after you voted on it. It's kind um, of those highlights won't be there. The struck through and the underline will be there, but the highlights won't be there. Uh, oh the my phone. god, never mind. <laughs> it's her phone. <laughs> My phone and I'm... Yeah. That's, what I'm thinking. That's okay, how I, I realized I was late. I apologize. <laughs> I, I clicked on my phone and went, holy cow, they're live. They're on now. <laughs> so, so the price increases that we did have, it wouldn't take that long to do analysis. I'll, I'll tell you what I could do. I could take the highlight off everything that isn't a, a real price Why increase. Why don't you do that? Right. And then just leave well, highlights I don't have a on the real that. price increases so you can clearly okay. see what's right. been gone up. And would you send us the, I guess, the price increases or the analysis that you did a couple of years ago, 2017? I'll see if I've still got it on my computer. Yeah, if you could do that. Yeah. Because now what we're looking at, I think also what we, oftentimes what we're forgetting is that things have had to change since Hurricane Michael. Absolutely. Yeah. Have so, changed. I mean, we're trying to rebuild a city as well. I understand. Um, so, so, I think we could look at the compare, you know, like people send us mm -hmm. analysis prior to. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's kind of hard to read because, like you said, it's not apples to apples. Yeah. So, I'll be I'll, honest with you, right? Because I, I did start looking at this at one time. and It's hard. It's isn't hard. It? it is yeah, hard. <laughs> We're trying to get what you want now. I know, I know. He just wants to give us loads of really difficult work. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. But what, is that reasonable to ask just for the ones we have price increases yes. to see if we can do analysis yes. just on those? I'm just going to do, you know, where it wasn't actually an increase, where we're already charging it, but it wasn't in the resolution. I'm not going to, I'm going to take the highlight off that okay. as well. I'm only going to leave the highlights on the ones where there's right. an actual increase and there aren't many. Any. You'll see. Okay. There's I know. Like there isn't. Or and something. Does that make? Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Something may help as well as putting just a percent increase between what it was and what and it what is it now. Is. In other words, but an up arrow, one percent with an up arrow or whatever. And, and, and the ones 1%. we cannot make That's an fine. analysis to, we, right. we're just not going to do those. That's and I'm not yes. trying to create work, man. I just no, most no, people no, look at it I'm and if they see one or two percent, they're going to be like one or two percent. I can do that. So do you want that done? so that it's reflected do you want to keep this on the agenda and me do that or do you want it to go on the next meeting would you have time to do it by tuesday yeah I'll do it today she's got nothing else going on would we have time to review it <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. Look yeah let's just let's move this i'm to just the, gonna take the highlights off yeah. let's move it to the next agenda <laughs> okay yeah because we may not have time to review it right before tuesday okay so yeah if we can move this to uh 
for the next edition. Yeah, and I'll find that. I, I will find just so that you can see if I've still got it on my computer where we did do the uh, comparison of other cities as well for okay. their impact fees and things. That gives us you know a couple of weeks to uh, to review it, look over, and come back and discuss it again. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> and I'll try not to make more things difficult. Okay. <laughs> it's their Air Force guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh! oh. Yeah. <laughs> Discussion oh. impossible approval to awards. Dead parents. Be it number <laughs> 21 the ball. slash 2206 for ground storage tank repairs and painting to honest blasting and coding. Uh, Director of Utilities. Good morning, Good morning, sir. Our, um, we have four ground storage tanks. These are three, two water tanks and one reclay water tank. Um, the bids came in great. We had lots of bidders for it. Um, I was just really glad to see that. That's, that's been hard to get a lot of bidders for our utility project here lately and get competitive bids on. Um, the repairs are, are first. Uh, we've got some structural damage on these tanks that need to be addressed, and then uh, they'll be painted. Um, our city manager has a color chart. There's some color choices. You can paint it whatever color you like. Um, we're going to buy the uh, paint direct, so that's going to save our tax mm -hmm. savings on that. Uh, we're going with a very nice um, long-term paint system. Um, we should get seven years or better out of this coating after we're done. Thank you. I recommend glitter paint. Yeah, glitter. Let's go yeah. glitter. No. Yeah, that's glitter. Yeah. 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 Orange glitter. No, no, yeah. Yeah. Follow up on that. I was thinking yeah. garnet gold, but that's yeah. 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 trying to find yeah. an artist to do mural art. Uh, actually, as soon as you guys are finished, I was going to update you on that. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Any questions? No. Any questions regarding the beads or anything like that? No. Um, we do have one question regarding the beads. Man, there's like a huge disparity in. Yes. The, some of the scores from like 266 to 80. Um, so what happened there? Yeah, well, the, the scoring is based on a specific criteria in the bid package. Um, if you'll go to the actual bid for the tanks, right. uh, we had bids coming in at $500,000 down to one eighty eight, three hundred. dollars um, um, So it, it really... There was a lot of difference in the companies that bid. We had tank manufacturers bidding, the guys that build the concrete storage tanks. And then we had guys that, you know, do industrial sandblasting uh, and repair work. So, uh, so there was a wide range of people coming to the table, and I think that's reflected in the in the pricing, and then that's reflected in the score sheet you have. Okay. Are they um the the one that um the highest the best bidder? Are they local? The one, no. They're out of um, South Florida, um, the other side of Tampa. All right. Any other questions for utility director? Thank you. Just to follow up on, <clears throat> before we can do any of the mural and get any of that, all of that stuff has to be fixed. Yes, mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah, this will it's, be the, the initial steps, fixing the damage, making sure we got a good structural tank. That's paramount. And then we'll have a base coating that then mm -hmm. can be have a mural put on. Um, one note, um, the Reeves tank out of the sport complex, we had complaints over the years that the softballs would get lost in the color of the tank. Uh, <laughs> home field advantage, right? Uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, just, just note that when we get Thank you very much. Um, one of the other things, too, is I have met with at least three artists, and I've given them kind of a timeline, told them that, of course, it would be around right about this time that you, we would bring it to the commission for uh, the structural uh, uh, damage and uh, other painting to be done, and then we'll get back with them. So they have kind of a list of what some of the things that um, they should be doing in this time, and then they will be able to bring back their cost or what it would cost to actually do that, and then I'll bring it to the commission. Okay. okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, agenda item number 15, uh, discussion about new legislation that may affect local municipalities. There's no voting on this, but wanted to just have a discussion on it. 
and then the defense. So something was added. About, uh, to the attorney talking to us about this a little bit. Just the. Yeah, is there anything in particular? Just, that... in, just in general. I mean, what? Um, <laughs> I mean, what's? What seems to be coming out of the legislature this year, and I mean, what? 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 What is the? I mean, Commissioner Warwick talked about it, um, you know, in the letter he sent um, in the last meeting in, in his report. Are we are we going to get to the point where we're, we're just on guidelines by the state or? So, so. I mean, I don't think it's ever going to entirely get to that point. Um, what I can do and you guys probably all get League of, you know, probably get some of the same League of Cities updates. You know, their their team of lobbyists that track all these bills, and, you know, and a lot of it's especially now because they're in they're they're in session um i mean all they're doing is monitoring it and seeing what are you know some problem areas and, and trying to fight them but you know until session ends you know they're not going to know what uh you know what's going to get passed so i mean if you guys are interested in you know what's out there and there's bills that are that you're concerned about um i can uh, get with all these cities and pull that up um because i mean there may be a couple that's like all right well big call your legislator we want to try to defeat this one um there's others that they think they're probably going to go through and they're going to pass and just just be aware of it um but uh yeah i mean i can i can get that information uh from, from the league and and their lobbyists pretty easily and they and they track all that keep track of it and then once session's over and the bills are passed um there's always a legislative but there's a legislative update um and so that's kind of the yeah, you know, the best time to go over all that stuff is is after sessions over. You can do a legislative update on what's happened. But if there's any you know hot topic type items, what the league will do, they'll, they'll send out an email blast to everybody and say, "Hey, you know this bill is really bad for cities. You know, contact your your legislators and that sort of stuff." And I, I haven't seen one of those yet this year from the league. Um, but invariably, every every year, every session, as it gets closer to the end. There are some bills that come out out there that uh, the league doesn't like, and they'll let us all know. So, um, you know, if I see one of those, I'll certainly let everybody know, and then we could do a legislative up update after session's over to kind of update everybody on what you know what bills passed and how that might change things. So yesterday I had a, a day at the Capitol, um, so I had a chance to go uh, to the Capitol yesterday and meet with some different representatives. Went to the Senate session. And also went by the Florida League of Cities and sat down with their um, Addison, uh, paying their lead advocate, basically statewide advocate, and basically they have a summary of probably a hundred bills are going to impact local local municipalities. So I read through all of those bills and then looked at the ones that I thought would be impactful to us in particular. Like there are bills that, are, that deal with recycling. We don't have recycling right now, so. Not that we couldn't advocate for that, but that's not one that might deal specifically with us right. um, here in Lynn Haven. And so her and I sort of perused through all those bills and see which ones would pertain to Lynn Haven. Um, and these are the two or three that we thought would really impact our city if they were uh, updated or if they were passed. And so some of them have already been passed by the House. One may be passed by the House, one may be passed by the Senate, but it still hasn't been ratified because it hasn't passed through both of them. Um, both yet and so what um, what so what I would like for us to do um, you know you can look over this uh, sort of just a quick overview gives you the um, the Florida League of Cities um, stance on it whether we should oppose it or support it um, and then also just print it out from their advocacy toolkit on their website just how we can actually write a letter to our representative so mm -hmm. Write a letter to Gaynor, write a letter to Trumbull, and what to include and not include in that letter. And you don't have to limit it to them. You can write it to whoever right. you want to write it to. So yesterday, um, <clears throat> because some sessions started, some committee sessions started at 7 a.m. <clears throat> um, so I did go by Trumbull's office. I knew that he would be in committee meeting because of his position. So I wasn't able to see him. I did wave at uh, Senator Gaynor from um, from the audience there. And so he, he waved back. And then, uh, but he wasn't available until like 6 p.m. Uh, and I had to get back for another meeting. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get back for a table talk, and I came in right at the very end as city manager was leaving the parking lot, so she gave me a summary of that evening's discussion. Uh, so I wasn't actually able to meet one-on-one -on -one with them, but did meet with their aides and their staff, um, talk with the governor's staff, uh, talk with uh, commissioner of agriculture, talk with her staff, 
Um, so you did get a chance to talk to a lot of aides and staff and did meet with some representatives to talk about some of these um, specific bills to try to get some advocates beyond just our local um, officials that represent us. And so in looking over these, um, one of the issues, HB 985, um, sovereign immunity caps. And so essentially what that bill does is that if someone is walking down our sidewalks and trip over it, now they, the state, if this legislation is passed, they can sue us for up to a million dollars. And then one that has it where there's no cap on it at all. Currently the cap was like 200, 300,000. <laughs> now, what this does is that if a person, let's say they have $750,000 worth of damages, the judge can only award them from us $200,000, but they can go and petition the state. I mean, they would have actually have to go to a legislation session in order to petition to get more money. And so as I'm understanding it from the Florida League of Cities, the legislation is wanting people to stop coming to them mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. allow them to get more money from mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. um, is what this bill is really promoting. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're opposed to that. Initially, she said they went in and they advocated and they got the bill down to 300,000, 400,000, and they were okay with that. But once it went back to the committee, it went back <laughs> up to 1 million, 3 million, and then one of them has no cap on it. And so part of the difficulties with tracking some of these bills is that you might have two different um, representatives supporting similar but different language bills. And so there's actually two like sovereign immunity cap bills probably that's going on um, by two different representatives. So one of the bills has, 1 million, 3 million cap, and then one of them has 1 million and no cap. And so you're trying to fight and figure out both of these bills and trying to, you know, oppose both of those. Um, so if I understand it right, the Florida League of Cities is kind of like an insurance for municipalities in this aspect. If um, you have an incident like that happen, because they pay... They pay out for it, right? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Our no. personal insurance does that. Our, our personal, right. yeah. Which, oh, okay, I thought you were saying earlier. Is, is a lobbyist yep. group for oh, right. right. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. is, is I guess lobbyist. I misunderstood what you said earlier. I thought it sounded like they paid for it or something. <laughs> no, they they're they're just advocating for us um, for all the cities okay. on these particular issues. Now, when you do mention insurance, she did mention that um, it would increase insurance rates mm -hmm. because yeah. now. You have the capacity to pay out more um, through your insurance, so it could so your premium go up. increase that. Um, These lawsuits do yeah. local ordinances uh, was another issue um, that to look at, and that's um, whether or not when we're creating an ordinance, how much. Of course, we should be diligent in our front work on the ordinance, um, but it also leans into the fact that we can get if the ordinance impacts local businesses, they can actually sue us for profit loss. Um, and so that's a bill that um, is actually going through. And so there's two, again, there's two bills following that. So there's HB 403, then there's another bill that's following that. Mm -hmm. So if we, so we would need to do, when we create an ordinance, we would need to make sure that it does not impact a local business um, and cause them to lose profit of 15%. Of course, they would have to show proof of that for the, for the previous three years, but it could be a new business. Um, it could be someone who's been in the area for three years. Initially, from what she told me, before they um, lobbied on this, the ordinance would actually apply to any business in the state of Florida. So if we changed the ordinance, someone from Miami could sue us saying that it impacted them. That's what it originally read. Oh, wow. um, but they did get it to say that it had to be within that municipality for three years. Um, so I'm not saying that we should you know, oppose or support, but that was something that they opposed um, and encouraged us as commissioners and municipal leaders to oppose. And then there was the uh, support HB 105 regulation of smoking in public places. Right now we can't regulate smoking in public places. So with this ordinance, it would allow us to say this is a smoke free zone. Um, this is the and, one about public parks, right? Right, that in your public parks, you can designate smoke free zones um, in those public park areas or in your, uh, at the new sports complex, we, we want a smoke free zone, you know, at the sports complex. Um, she said, uh, it was funny, she said one of the guys, uh, one of the senators changed some of the language of it because he did like to smoke cigars on the golf course. And so when you, and actually when you go read it, it actually talks about filtered uh, cigarettes. Yeah, and, I uh, figured it. They tried to hardly vape in there, you know. Yeah, so, um, so cigars are not included um, because somebody likes to play golf <laughs> and smoke their cigar. So, but um, certainly there's a hundred plus ordinances that are out there that are impacting our cities. 
feel free, as Kevin has mentioned, it's on the Florida League of Cities website. Feel free to go through and look at yeah. those. Um, but I would encourage us, especially for these ordinances that do have a direct impact on us, and we do, you know, people do like to sue Lynn Haven for some reason, um, that we would, you know, take this template, talk, take some of the talking points and contact Jay Trumbull, contact um, Senator Gaynor and uh, Representative Trumbull, Senator Gaynor, and say, you know, we oppose this, we don't like this. You know, I would encourage us to do that as a commission. And I do plan on reaching out to the other mayors in our area to encourage them to do the same thing uh, as well in their municipalities, because this really can impact us in many ways. <clears throat> Even if no one ever sues you us. Think, you think about that. I, they, I, I was at the Rotary meeting on Wednesday and someone used the example of uh, the, the, the beach made a decision or an ordinance based on safety of people for the for the mopeds and stuff mm -hmm. that they're walking oh, yeah. around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What what impact would that have? It definitely had a detrimental impact on business on, on the people who rented those things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and so now they are able to rent motorcycles, which makes no sense. They, well, they, yeah, they, there you go. Tours. Everybody gets around something, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah, they just they just took it up to the next level. So, but you know, I'm glad you brought that up. Where I, I just that, to update you on the the letter I sent, I I still haven't heard any more. Yeah, because I I wanted to make sure that you know that, that it looked like the state's <laughs> gearing us towards well every, every that's what the it's government so the state right. government local government kind of thing, but but to to get into like you know owning. Of municipal ordinances it's like so are we going to have a, right. a code to go by here or, you know but that's kevin cleared it up as far as it's just certain certain things but yeah go, go ahead that because your because your letter was along those lines right mm -hmm. so and you know to me i state and federal have their you know their area that they they have to govern you know but there's a lot of things that you can solve at the municipal elect uh, level yeah. And if you don't allow municipal um, government to take care of it, then the, either the county or the government's going to do it, or the state's going to do it. I'm just a believer of less government as opposed to bigger government and trying to solve problems at the lowest level. Um, but I, I haven't wrote to the governor yet, and the reason being is I'm trying to make the letter stronger than it already is. I want to try to make it a strong point so i am working it and i will be send still will be sending one to the governor and lieutenant yeah. governor i still haven't heard back from jay trumbull i still haven't heard back from griff griffiths only when i heard back with brian cloudis so and i, and I really truly want to sit down with jay trumbull and griff griffiths i would like to really get their viewpoints on it but i'll probably send them another letter yeah and you know just the the small conversations i had yesterday it's I mean, local and state are two different, you know, two different, obviously they're two different governments, but mm -hmm. they're running on, you know, we're not even running parallel a lot of times where yeah. as municipals, we're making decisions based on our citizens and the input we receive right. from them. Right, one-on-one -on -one with their citizens. You know, and at the state, like I had a representative tell me, he says, I don't agree with this bill, but I'm voting on it because this is my party line and I want to get elected next time. That's terrible. That's so, <laughs> that, so that's that's forgetting all about individuals. So a lot of times, you know, that's we're, what we're fighting against. We're face to face with the people of our city, and that's what I like about what we're the city. Mm. I don't want to take it up to another level where there's a disconnect. You know. Yeah. You know. So that we we just got to remember that's what that's what we're we're here for. Yeah. You know? no, that's a good point. You know, when you mentioned the connect, um, I'm also part of the uh, federal action team with the Florida League of Cities. Uh, so I'm on that committee. And so we're going to try to talk with um, Congressman Dunn about having like a virtual uh, town hall um, to try to make sure that we can still stay connected to our state and, and national leaders because they're not able to, you know, the citizens aren't able to reach out to them, they're able to reach out to us. Um, though they live here locally, they still have, you know, different parameters um, around them that we don't have um, when it comes to contact. And so that is something that we're working on. Uh, through the Florida should, City should come to see us like that. And, uh, and at least try to do it virtually. If we can't do it uh, in person. So, but wanted to bring those things up and just encourage you to, <clears throat> whether it's these particular uh, bills or any other bill that you might feel passionate about, um, like, you know, 
Commissioner Work has done, you know, emailing our, our representatives or calling them, talking with them, <laughs> you know, send out your position on this so that they can hear from us so that we can take away the excuse that I didn't hear from anyone. Right. And then when right. I didn't say, is your session ended message. now or no, it, it, it ends March the 11th. March. Uh, okay. And so, although one of these bills, you know, when you go and track the bill, you may see that it's still in, it'll show you whether it's still in committee or that it's already been passed by the Senate or the House, but it has to be passed by both before it's ratified. Right. Um, and so there, there still is opportunity to advocate to our, um, to our representatives to make sure that they understand our positions locally, our yeah. positions on these particular issues. We've been issues. to the fourth floor of the Capitol. No. <laughs> you, got, you got the uh, Senate, right, and then the House, and in the middle is a big lobby, and everything, the bills go across, and that's why everybody in the middle is a lobbyist. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to get, they're trying to get people, chew on people's ears in between, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Based on something Jamie said last week at the commission meeting about the amount of money that Lynn Haven receives from uh, traffic tickets mm -hmm. and things of that mm -hmm. nature, to me, is absolutely mm -hmm. unbelievable. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I know what you're saying is true. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how we can operate. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Our police officers are out there spending their time getting paid mm -hmm. by the hour. And I mean, we get just a mere pittance of that money. Mm -hmm. So from a state level, that would be something that we could, um, with our incoming representative, whoever that might be, we could petition them to draw up a bill that could maybe change that fee schedule so that municipalities can get more from actually the work that they're doing. Well, I, I think it's a lot more involved than that because that whole thing, they have their own commission just on that oh, yeah. schedule of fees and they get to get, well, I think I said that was a 25 yeah. years or 20 years or whatever it is. And uh, that's going to be a tough one to change, but that can be done. <laughs> but. Um, anything else for the good of the order? I do. Yes, I sir. do too. Go ahead. You go. No, I, mine's longer. Go ahead. Oh, really? Oh, mine's not long. Um, <laughs> um, Vicki and I had exchanged some emails this week. I asked for this to be on the agenda, um, but I'll just get the feel of the commission here. You know that I proposed uh, last year, I believe it was, uh, a grievance committee um, for citywide employees, and um, you guys pretty much weren't interested in it. Um, I'm just trying to get a feel for it again. If anybody's changed their mind, if you see any um, positive in having a grievance committee. Um, you mentioned lawsuits. I don't want to discuss lawsuits that are going on, but I do, I think it could eliminate uh, some lawsuits, but I was in customer service for many years. And the number one thing that eliminates and stops the complaining is for people just to be heard, just sit across the table, let them tell you everything that's wrong and, tell, and, and let them know that somebody's listening to them. That's the number one thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it would uh, stop so many things and you know cause the city less problem but anyway with that being said i just uh, i just my i just want to put my point of view out there yeah. to, 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 to just is that i feel like we have an hr department mm -hmm. and hr if hr is doing their job mm -hmm. exactly what you're saying mm -hmm. should be happening mm -hmm. it's just another it bureaucratic yeah it does. it's yeah. just another bureaucratic so, board put together to and i didn't not. and that that those were those were my feelings <laughs> that i haven't really you know, I haven't delved too much into what, what you know, there's no complaints on HR, so HR must be doing, you know, yeah. no, what they're supposed asking. to do. I'm not judging no, I, 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 that's, that, that, that's just my film. Why, yeah. why create more, more stuff? I don't really have, have a viewpoint either way, because I guess I'd, I'd have to know what the scope of, of that committee would be. You know, what would there be duties and responsibilities and things like right. that? And, you know, yeah. what are you smiling yeah. about? <laughs> Lifting, man. I've, I've never had a, I've never had a grievance committee in my at any in, in the military. You just get orders. See, and that's right. <laughs> yeah. Grievance. You're either outstanding or you're out processing. Well, I just asked Jennifer just if she wanted to yeah. just come up and com and comment on that. Jennifer has a yes, I am HR. Um, many many years of experience and, and uh, working in the court system as well. So exactly and. Commissioner, you're correct. There is some litigation. There is always litigation. 
uh, with any kind of entity because um, that's people's right to file a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. um, the lawsuits that we have are, first off, the city denies any kind of liability and they're being diligently defended by appropriate staff. As far as HR and the review, we have a multi-tiered review for any kind of complaints. So if there is an issue with an employee, whether it's their performance or behavior, they first have to come through me, meaning supervisors, if they're having issues and we've been having HR tips, lots of training, they have to come to me and provide documentation. So it's just not a, this is not working out. I have to have documentation. If they haven't created documentation, I'm usually involved in that. So we're involved in counseling, we're involved in feedback. When anyone leaves because they separate or terminate or retire, we do exits. So I'm talking to them comp confidentially to get their feedback and their input. That can lead to positive change within the organization. My experience with either, either civil service boards or grievance boards, because I've been in government a long, long, long time, is that they increase cost to the organization and to the employees. They increased delays in effective management and operations, and they reduced <laughs> service. I used to testify uh, when the state had civil service boards, <clears throat> and there would be uh, a problem with an employee that was clearly, there was clear evidence of the problem, and it could take up to two years to terminate that individual. That meant you were paying state dollars for uh, payroll, you were paying for an ongoing legal battle, and you weren't getting the service. I would hope you would entrust in me to do my job. If you have issues or questions, and employees know they can come to me confidentially. Honestly, we have tight quarters. I meet them at different locations, whatever is comfortable to try to see if we can resolve whatever the issues are. Because our people are our strongest and most valuable asset, and we need to invest in those assets. So, um, Keep in mind, I do have a labor attorney, too, who helps me with any kind of, of those difficult, you know, the termination is difficult at every level. So I'm in conversation to make sure rights are being protected on um, both of the city and the employee. Mm -hmm. So if any time you want to talk to me about it, mm -hmm. I may not be able to talk about a specific case, but I can give you that. Mm -hmm. So the question I have is, not to say this is, we don't trust you. I, I think from what I've seen, you do an outstanding job. But let's say we did have a human resource manager that wasn't doing a very good job. Do they have another avenue to go to, such as that labor attorney or whatever it was you talked to, in case they don't trust you? you well, and I mean? all of our, our policies, and, and they can always be shored up and reviewed, but there's usually a, what I call a multi-tier. So I always want to ha tell an employee, can you go to your supervisor? But right. if the supervisor is the problem, can you go to a director? If the director is a problem, regardless, you can always come to me. You can go to the city manager. You want to try to take it attorney, at the lowest level possible. Yeah, if you want an attorney, they could always seek an attorney outside. They don't have to go to any of the attorneys that are representing the city. That's that's what often will happen, but it, upon our... When I do what I call onboarding, I am... And when I follow up with our new employees, how are things going? If things aren't going well, please come and talk to me. Mm -hmm. Let me see, because sometimes it's perception. It's, right. it's they didn't hear right, or maybe that supervisor needs a little more training on how to be empathetic or how to understand uh, and, and convey a message. Right. But, they, but if they wanted to go to that, that attorney that they could, because that, that, the reason I think that's important is that's someone outside the mm -hmm. city. You know, and I'm not saying we have this problem, but let's just say we have a, a problem with a city where, you know, well, it, it has happened in the past where you have bad people and, and, and leadership positions. And when that happens, they don't have anybody to go to. So I just want to make sure they have an avenue outside the city where they could 
get help. And honestly, I could I could work. And again, I'm not I think is, you know, a great area. job, and they won't be satisfied mm -hmm. with what I right. do for them. Again, mm -hmm. I always try to give them the next step or another option. Um, I try to mitigate any kind of legal action because that's costly to the individual and to the organization. You know, I, I come from the legal world, world, and we all know it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And usually the only winners are going to be the attorneys or the professionals within yeah. the organization. Um, and that doesn't make that bad. That just is then when you get into that world, somebody's advocating. Your question, could they go to our legal attorney? I would probably be present because they need to understand that legal attorney, our firm, represents the city, mm -hmm. not them individually. So it may be that gets into a very... Um, precarious role and at that point I might say to them if you're unhappy you might need to seek counsel right. to get this resolved and that's why sometimes there's litigation they're unhappy with the outcome even if it's backed up with they all, all the evidence in the world right. or not found it they still want to take that next step which is their right. right and I can't not I cannot not tell them that that's their right that was a double negative but um, <laughs> <laughs> you know that is their right okay so it, it's always a challenge. We're talking about human behavior yeah. and performance. We're talking about communication, um, which we all struggle every day with communication. Yeah. How's the best way to communicate yeah. with different generations and different types of workers? So, but I'm, my door's open to you all, too. Um, certain things I can't discuss because of confidentiality, but... Uh, but you have, there is a system. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. It's yeah. multi very well a yes. communication and a lack of yes. communication system yes. there's documentation yes. and all that that is so very true when, when an issue blossoms it's it's yes. gone through that yes. yes so that's and ultimately why uh, we have hr and and yes. the idea of um grievance committees are typically <laughs> internal and they have they often have very little ability to make change other than be a sounding board. So uh, a, an outside civil service still is limited um, by charter mm -hmm. and by authority. So are we just adding, honestly, another layer of bureaucracy? Mm -hmm. And the example we've experienced out of Panama City Beach with their civil service board, and you, when they escalate there, it turns into a you know a mini trial, and you know, even then, you know, lawyers get involved, and you know you might have a a termination gets overruled and turns into a suspension or demotion and you know if they're not happy with that it still doesn't necessarily eliminate losses either but it definitely adds another layer um so. and, and commissioner tenor just a, just a, for your point in my newsletter at the end of what i say anybody can tell me what did i say at the end of what i say my door is always open mm -hmm. and I have those all the time. So I do, I do speak with um, employees that are having some issues uh, directors or supervisors never know mm -hmm. that I talk to them. I go to HR and say, can you look into this? That is our job to take care of our employees. And they can tell you that we take care of them very, very well. We love every single one of our employees, and our job is to give them the tools to do their jobs, um, to support them in everything that they do, and and then try to help them build a better career here at the city. And and that is that's my whole goal. So we definitely have some things in place that will help. Them. Just checking that. No, no, Did, right. I and I was just going to ask. I don't know if they can even tell me. Did y'all get the email about the property for sale? Okay. You talking about the house? Yeah, the yellow, yellow house. house. Yellow house, yes. Mm -hmm. I did not. You didn't? Okay. No. He's got it up for sale. Mm. Yeah, I didn't know if they were asking if there's any interest. Huh? Asking if there's any interest. Yeah. Yeah. I do have something else. What else is going on, Kyle Long? Oh, man, that's what I If you're willing. Let's, who is it? What ah, is it? That's what so, we're here for. <clears throat> I wanted to talk about public commentary because I know um, I've heard a bunch of different grumblings about it. Like, for instance, we're trying to silence people, we're infringing on their First Amendment rights, 
We're telling residents how to say it, why to say it, what to say, when to say it, how long to say it. And uh, I just kind of wanted to go over the guidelines if you're all right with that. Sure. First, let me say, according to state statute, city attorney, public commentary is not required. I'm going to go over that too. So. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's right. We, so, we, we do more. We do more than what's required by state law, and that's why I wanted to yeah, go over. And let me also believe. say, if you compare our guidelines to what's actually in our ordinance, mm -hmm. our guidelines are less stringent stringent than what's in our ordinance. Right. Our ordinance says you should submit your name and what you want to right. discuss. Yeah. Before you can even come up for yeah, that's, that's what they do at the TTO. So I got all my talking yeah. points, and that's yeah. a lot of that's in my talking <laughs> points, yeah. and. uh so my first first thing I wanted to ask is, so these guidelines, it's not required for it to be voted on us. I think it's determined by the chairperson, which would be the mayor, correct? Correct. And um, yep. so the first thing it says, it says, upon being recognized by the mayor, the speaker will come to the podium and state their name and address for the public record. And uh, that seems to be uh, pretty normal from what I've seen. And just like you talked about, uh, most city councils require speakers to sign up before they speak and not only that most city councils require you to be a city resident to speak but we don't require that we allow anyone to speak right Good. and then there's some city councils that only if you're only a utility customer such as water and sewer mm -hmm. that if they speak they can only speak about those items but we don't limit that either right mm -hmm. correct okay all presentations are limited to one speaker that seems pretty standard um, um during the public commentary part of the agenda, the public may speak about any topic that is not already on the agenda. And um, so from what I've seen, some cities only allow the public to speak on what is on the agenda for the meeting and nothing else. But we don't do that without them to speak about anything pretty much. Right. And just like the attorney said, we're not even required to have public commentary. If we, and I'm not advocating not to have public commentary. I just want to make sure that we all, everyone understands. Right, yeah, it's, it's uh, only required for action items so right. in other words if it's required for agenda items but not for the order non-agenda stuff correct which is florida statute 286.0114 says members of the public should be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard on a proposition for a board of commission which i think is pretty much what the attorney is saying but my question on that one though is uh says that it's not already on the agenda let's say it's not a, an actual item should we allow them to talk about that and I think we did that at the last meeting, which was like the the one that's in the industrial park. There was a couple of residents that talked about it. It was on the agenda item, but it wasn't an actual item. Correct. So are we allowed to allow them to speak on those type of items? I know it's on the agenda, but it's not actionable. Right. Ideally, we're looking at actionable items when we're talking about what is on the, on okay. the agenda. Would actually be those actionable yeah. items. So yeah, if it's a first you're, reading, you're we can allow them to speak. You're allowed to allow to allow them, like, like we do now. We allow them to talk about anything. That's just not legally required by us, but we but we do it. And so well, the commentary my experience has been if you if, if you know whether it's on the agenda or not on the agenda, it can or it's going to come up on a later agenda. You know, during their three minutes of just general public commentary, they can talk about whatever they want. You know, and then when it gets to the agenda item, obviously, you know, everybody has a right to do it, you know, by right. law. But you know, if you want to see citizens and residents come out and complain um about being silenced then take away general, general public commentary that's where you get the complaints so right. and, and every city we've represented over the years and we, we we always allow that you know and that's the that's the category where you can you can maybe limit it and say okay well this is going to be for uh you know business owners and citizens only or, or whatever i mean there's there's more leeway there because it's not legally required to be done right uh but you know, like I said, we we're we're certainly more more broad, broad um, than a lot of cities, and um, so they could they could speak about something that's already on the agenda as long as it's not actionable. Is what I if I understand it right. Like first reading, they right. could, we were, Correct. We we're saying yeah, go ahead and speak about that first reading. Um, sure. If we're not since we're not voting on it, then right? Go ahead and make your. You know, <laughs> so I'm sorry. And they would do that during the general public commentary. Yeah. So are you saying that, like, for example, the Dr. LBB issue that's coming up Tuesday, that those people will not be allowed to speak? They'll be out, they won't be allowed to speak of public commentary, only when we get to that item and we open it up for public okay. comments. Okay. 
right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that'll happen. Like somebody will come up there at our public commentary and start talking about it. And I, I know the mayor does a good job. He'll say, well, hold on. You know, that's agenda item number eight. Okay. But they and will still be. Well, yeah. you, you know, please yeah. wait and come back up here during item number eight because, you know, that's where it, it's just easier for, for the commissioners to hear it all at once during that agenda item. Um, and I know the mayor does a good job of that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's certainly – um, allowed to talk about it those do it during the agenda item okay uh during a specific uh agenda item on the agenda speaker may only speak about that specific agenda item that makes sense to me public commentary will be limited to three minutes per speaker speakers shall not be permitted to yield unused time to additional speakers and what i'm seeing most city councils the standards pretty much two to three minutes i've seen some as much as high as five minutes but those are typically small municipalities you don't have a whole lot of public part uh uh, a lot of residents speaking. Um, I've seen some city councils cut off public commentary if it goes too long. They only allow, wow. and then there's some I've seen where they only allow so much time for public commentary. So I've seen some where they allow them 30 minutes. So if you allow them 30 minutes, hmm. three minutes a person, that would only be 10 people. Right. Um, but we don't do any of that, right? No. Matter of fact, we, we had our stormwater yep. meeting. There was an hour and 30 minutes of public commentary. Yes. Okay. Good point. Uh, city meeting uh, for the timekeeper it just talks about keeping track of time. City manager, IT clerk will serve as the official timekeeper. And then down here it says disruptive behavior should not be tolerated. No person while attending a meeting of the commission shall engage in activity designed primarily to disrupt the meeting. This shall include, but is not limited to, disrupted hand clapping, foot stomping, booing, cheering, operation of noise making devices, fighting or brawling, arguing, or other similar disruptive or distractive activities. So one of the things I found was uh, there's actually some Supreme Court and, uh, of course, stuff in the Constitution that talks about this. And one of them was the Ninth Court of Appeal addressed this with uh, Casa versus City of Casa Mesa case, indicating where the line may be lie between council rules that are enforceable and those that violate constitutional rights. <clears throat> the court looked approvingly on rules that stated it shall be unlawful for any person in the audience at a council meeting to do any of the following. Engage in disorderly, disrupted, disturbing, delaying, or boisterous conduct such as, but not limited to, hand clapping, stopping of feet, whistling, making noise, use of profane language or obscene gestures, yelling, or similar demonstrations which conduct substantially interrupt, or which conduct substantially interrupts, delays, or disturbs the peace and good order of the proceedings of the council, which is pretty close to the wording that we have in our guidelines. So. At the last meeting, I know the mayor said, um, you know, make sure you give all your comments to the chair. And if you engage in any personal tax, I would have to rent or do or something like that. Right. And that's actually in our code. Right. Yeah. So that's why I'm going to ask you why. You um, because that. I read our code recently. So when it comes to public commentary, even with developing this public commentary, I followed it with city attorney, followed it with city manager. Yep. And actually look through other public commentaries through the state of Florida guidelines. So we didn't just I didn't just sit right. down and magically come up with this. I know. Compared it to not only local municipalities such as Panama City Beach, Panama City, but other um, areas throughout the state. And and there were some things that though allowable by us, which is hey, you need to turn in your uh, your topic point as well as give us your name. Some cities require that yeah. four o'clock the day before. Yeah. And I said, I know. you know, that won't be fair to our citizens because <laughs> we may have someone who doesn't have access to a computer or who may not be able to turn that in in another time. Right. So what's funny to me is that when people do get up and discuss how we're hampering their freedom of speech, they're doing that while speaking and no one is hampering their freedom of speech to even say <laughs> that much. Right. So, um, <clears throat> so with that, when it comes to why I made that statement, and Ryan Square asked me the same question, is because I'm just reminding people, one, if we have new people coming into the audience, I don't know why you're coming to the meeting that day. Thank you. As you saw new faces that day, I don't know what that person's agenda is when they come to the meeting. Right. So just reminding people, hey, you're not coming in to bully, bully any of the commissioners. You're not coming in to disrespect any of our commissioners. Uh, we're not, yeah. we're not going to tolerate that behavior. So that's a, well, I think there's a misconception that you can go in and say whatever you want. And, that, and that's not true. Because there's a difference between public forum and limited public forum. Thank you. Right. And public forum basically means if you're on a public street, sidewalk, or park, 
you pretty much can say <laughs> almost anything you want as long as you're not breaking the law, pretty much. But with limited public forums, such as public commentary, you don't have an absolute right to speak. You have a right to speak, but you can't say anything you want. It's a board meeting. And normally the three things that they cover is it uh, limits you to the subject matters on the agenda, limit to the time allowed for each speaker, and preventing disruption in the meeting is the three big things they always talk about when they talk about that in the Constitution. So uh, as I've explained to some of our citizens individually, the whole purpose of these guidelines being the way they are is for us to have the quorum. Yes, I agree. Because I've gone to some meetings throughout our city where there is not decorum, mm -hmm. you know, uh, where I've seen <clears throat> mayors disrespect citizens in the community. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on the same token, seeing citizens come yeah. up and blatantly disrespect, I mean, even come up and talk about people's mothers. Yeah. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've been in meetings where I've seen that, mm -hmm. um, where people came up and a citizen come up and talk about that person's mm -hmm. family um, in other municipalities. And so, and, and I'm not advocating for anything. I just yeah. want to make sure that we're doing everything we're supposed to be doing and that we're not infringing anybody's rights because because now what we can do is we can go back and look at the codes mm -hmm. and we can add what the codes say to this. Where yeah, I'll make it more restrictive. You're right. We can make it more restrictive. So now we can we can do that if they're can I don't want to do that. Okay. <laughs> so we, And I'm not advocating. Okay. So we, we can do that where when I went for example, I went to Panama City's public uh meeting the other day and um I went to their commission meeting uh, last week. Only two people were able to get up for public commentary. Now there might have been a hundred people that wanted to speak, but because you had to already have turned in your name and your yep. information, only two people were able to get up and address public commentary. I so, wish we could educate people to contact the commissioners. Yeah, so this if we knew always, what they wanted, yeah. it, it's yeah. easy so, to come here and make it, you know. So the reason, team, one of the reasons I bring this up is what we did before and what we do now, what, what are they not able to say now that we're able to say before? I don't know. No, there's That's nothing. We, we go above and beyond what's legally required. That's what I, I thought. I, yeah. Anything is different now than it was before. And I know one of the, you know, one of the things that I receive from people is, hey, you don't answer our questions. Um, now, that was something that, the, because before becoming mayor, um, of course, I was coming, I started coming to the city commission meetings 2019. Mm -hmm. And then once I started running for mayor, I came to the city commission meetings to see how those meetings were ran. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how did Dan Russell <clears throat> lead the meeting? Because I know that would be a requirement of me as mayor is how to lead the meeting. Mm -hmm. And so what I noticed when he led the meeting was that there was no back and forth between the commission and the public. Uh, and so when people are saying, well, hey, you're stopping us from answering questions. Well, I'm just actually continuing a standard or, you know, a procedure that was already initiated by my predecessor in this position, though he was, you know, um, Mayor Pro Tem, but in that position of leading or the chairperson and leading that meeting yeah. and saw that it actually I think our meetings have much more decorum than other meetings I've seen. Yes. So when I've gone to another municipality's meeting and there is going back and forth, mm -hmm. it actually gets riled up and there is back and forth. Right. And there's pointing fingers. Right. There's, I mean, it's just, it just turns out to a, a brawl. Right. Um, and I'm not, I'm not accusing yeah. you or anyone else doing mm -hmm. anything wrong. I just, I've heard a lot of some grumbles about it and I'm like, but just, I don't. Know, I don't see anything here that we're yeah. breaking anything in the Constitution and, and stuff that I've seen in the Supreme Court. Actually, you know, um, says almost a lot of the same things that are here. When I went to the Senate session yesterday, and I, I can't remember if I took a picture of it or not, but I thought about our meeting. There was a big sign on like every pillar as you're in as you're in the in the, in the chambers with them that says no clapping, no yep. shouting. I mm -hmm. mean. So everybody's there in silent and we're, we're whispering right. to each other, but there's no disruption. And so if one of the senators said something you didn't like, you're not going to jump up and scream in the audience and say, you know, right. answer my question. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're not going to do that. So, and that was just one case that I saw that that said the same thing, and I thought it directly core, almost direct, 100% directly correlated what it actually says in our guidelines. So, I just want to bring it up. Make sure if, if if we do we if any of us have any problems with these guidelines, I thought this would be a good time to bring it up. I don't have any problems with them. I looked through them, I reviewed them. You know, 
not that I'm a legal expert, but I've looked at, you know, the legal stuff and constitutional stuff, and I don't see any laws or anything that we're breaking. And, you know, as you're talking to your constituents, or actually all of our constituents, but as you're talking to particular people, just letting them know that my main objective with this public participation or with the meeting as a whole is decorum. Mm -hmm. You know, my job as chairperson is to run a smooth meeting. Right. And so it's to make sure that we maintain um, decorum during our meeting. And so that's that's the main objective is not because I don't want to have to bang on the gavel and ask chief to come remove someone from the meeting. You know, so that that's the main objective, not to stifle anyone's you know freedom of speech nope. or not to say what you don't want to say, because I just think we're I think we're pretty flexible. Yeah. For example, sure. people have come up and said things, personal things about me, and I haven't stopped them from saying it. Right. right. You know, so, I mean, we, for three minutes, they'll come up and rail on something, some particular issue that has nothing to do with anything pertaining to the city per se or my position in the city. So I haven't stopped their freedom of speech in any type of way. So I, this certainly I don't see that either. doesn't stifle it, but it's about having decorum right. where we do want people to feel comfortable coming to meetings. We want people to be able to watch the meetings. And I've received several comments about the improvement of the decorum mm -hmm. um, of our meetings that, hey, we like the way. Here. As our meetings are doing well. You know. Why? So. Because there's a brand new stimulus program that is providing state of the art. Well, <laughs> you know, so we'll, we'll chalk that up to there's nothing to do with technology, right? <laughs> so, but. Like yeah. I said, I wasn't trying to no. confuse you or anything. I just wanted yeah. to bring it up because I heard the grumblings and I was like, yeah, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. No, not a problem. Not a problem. All right. Anything else? That's it. All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.